Hello and welcome back. After posting the previous video about an introduction into how to combine Python and Excel where I was coding in Jupyter Notebook environment, it turns out that many of you have some issues getting started with coding in Jupyter Notebook environment. And I must admit that at the beginning it sounds a bit special, but it's super easy to get used to it and after you get used to it, you will find it a fantastic environment whenever you are dealing with data science projects. So in this video, I will show you all necessary things you need to know to be able to start writing codes in Jupyter Notebook. First off, how can we launch Jupyter Notebook? It's easiest to run it from Anaconda Navigator we discussed in a previous video that if your main tasks are within data science is an excellent decision to install Anaconda. It's also possible to run it through command prompt by typing Jupyter Notebook. Okay, so that essentially initiate and launch a Jupyter Notebook for you. Okay, so now I close down this. Now you may have realized that I launched Jupyter Lab last time, but essentially I was using Jupyter Notebook, which is part of Jupyter Lab. So you can do either one, either use Jupyter Notebook here or launch the Jupyter Lab and then select Notebook. The menus inside are slightly different, but you will see that they work exactly the same. Now let's say launch Jupyter Notebook. You see it opens the browser for you, it comes here. Now you can say new and then a Python 3 that opens a Jupyter notebook here for you. So as you see here by default, it is called untitled. You can rename it to let's say a test here since we are doing a test enter and now it's called test. So now the starting point is one cell and you see that the, the color is blue, which means that the cell is active, but is not in the edit mode. I cannot type, now I am you know, trying to type and it just opens some other things for me. So it's, it's really not in the edit mode. So remember, now we are in a command mode, it's called, to go to the edit mode where we can just type the codes in there. I have to press enter. Here you go. And now the cell becomes green. Now we are in the edit mode. I can write something, let's say print, hello, Jupiter. Okay, so now I, I have written my code in the cell, I need to run the cell. I can run the cell using shift and enter. And this one runs the cell for me. It really shows me the output right after the cell and it goes to the next cell. Okay, so that I can continue writing. What if I wanted to stay to run the code and stay within the same cell, I would have done so let's say Jupyter Notebook. I want to run this cell and stay within the same cell. I can press Control Enter. It shows me the output right after, but it stays within the same cell. Okay, so, so that depends exactly what you are doing. So now if I do again shift and enter, it goes to the next cell and it shows me here that this is for the third time that was uh, run this, this cell, okay? So now let's, let's come here and write something else. Uh, hello, Python, okay? And now let's say I change here. This is Hello Jupyter now, as you see, but this is Hello Jupyter Notebook because it was running the, the previous code. Now I am in here. So remember, I didn't run this one. So now it doesn't match the output to the, the way, the, my code. Now I am here, print Hello Python, and I run this cell. Again, I do, let's say, a shift and enter. 
So this is correctly run and it shows me, but as you see, this cell is not run. Okay, so that's essentially, and it shows you also this was the third and this is the fourth. Okay, so I need to really run this cell again to be able to see the correct output. The beauty of uh, Jupiter is that you can run each cell independently from the other one. So you, you don't have to run the whole program here. So if I want now to run this cell, I can go and then again, control enter and I see the output. Okay, so here's hello Jupiter, hello Python. Okay, so that's, that's very important that if you change things, you have to rerun it to be able to see the correct output. So obviously, sometimes you want to run everything together, then you have to run the whole codes, for example. Okay, so now I have this here, I have, let's say that here, and now I want to run everything. So both the the first one and the second one. So you see, for example, here you can see uh, run cells, run cells and select below, run cells and insert below, you, you see all these things. For example, I can run uh, all above. What it does is that it runs all above the cells. I was here and now it, it ran everything above, but not this one. I could, if I was here, for example, running all above, of course, it would have done uh, run these cells for me as well. And now imagine that I have this cell. I don't need it anymore. What can I do? I can do double D, so DD, and it will delete the cell for me. Okay, so that was deleted. Now imagine that I want to insert a cell above where I am. So here is the command mode. I can have A, stands for above, See, it was here. And now, now if I was here and I wanted to insert the cell below, I would enter B, stands for below, and it adds for me here, okay? Remember again, if I wanted to delete, double D, okay, double D. So now there is another thing that is very helpful is the fact that you can also write notes in a nice format within Jupyter. So imagine I want to add a note at the beginning tells me what this code is about. And I am here is in the active mode and I press A, it adds a cell above. How do I start writing within this cell? I need to go to the edit mode. So I need to press enter. Now it's green, now I can type. Let's say I want to write something in here that is just the description of this code. It's not gonna be a code. What do I do? So let's, let's first write and then see. So I can write, this is a test. So if I run this, what will happen? Obviously it's gonna give me an invalid syntax because now the program thinks that this is a code, whereas it's not a code. Here you can see that this cell is a code cell. I could change it to markdown. And as you can see here, it changes. Now this is a markdown cell, as opposed to this cell that is a code. So this one is a markdown. And if I run this, what will happen? This shows me, this is a test. So it's just a, if a note to the program. Now, if I wanted this to be a sort of heading, I can do what? I can have a hash sign. And if I run this, what will happen? It becomes a big heading. I can also do it to hash sign. This is a second heading. And I can also similarly have the third one becomes this. I add one in here, I go to the edit mode, and now I see that this is code and I don't wanna really go and change it from there. It's easy to change via shortcut. So you need to first go to the command mode by pressing escape. Now I can press M and I go to the markdown as you see here. And if I press Y, I shift to the code. So I press M, go to markdown, I sh press Y, go to code, okay? Now I press M markdown, I enter, and now I can write whatever I want, okay? I 
press escape, I go to the command mode, double D, and it's deleted. So one final thing, uh, imagine you have uh, you know, some sets of codes here, whatever it is, and these are really not the actual codes, these are notes you want to, in a way, you want to, in a way, deactivate these, these lines. So what can, what can you do? You can either have these hash signs one by one before each of them while you are in the code mode. Let's say print Python. If I run this code, it just ignores this, this uh, stuff that I have written here because these are deactivated. And there's an easy shortcut that you can do to deactivate or reactivate the part of a code and it's the control slash. Now this becomes reactivated and if I want to deactivate it, again control slash and becomes deactivated. I forgot a few final points. One very useful key is tab. Pressing tab either autocompletes for you or shows you all different possibilities. For example, let's say all underline data equals 14286. Now, if I start by writing all underline and then tab, it will autocomplete it for me. In addition, imagine I'm planning to do something with this data, but I am not 100% sure what are available options. Again, if I press tab, it's showing me available options. So then maybe I decide to say sort it. Now I can sort it and show the data. And that's what you can see that is sorted, okay? Another useful thing is the command palette. Here you can easily search for the actions you would like to perform. Command palette could be open either by clicking on this, or by control shift P. Now imagine you forgot uh, how to go from, uh, for example, edit mode to the command mode. We open the command palette by control shift P and then search for say command mode. As you see here, it shows us that pressing escape takes us to the command mode. The last point is that you can check all the keyboard shortcuts by pressing H. Here you can see all of them in detail. I hope that this was useful for you. Very, very soon, hopefully within a few days, I will be back to implement our first real project, which is going to be about how to use Python to make our financial models much more informative. So, see you soon.